G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru and today we're going to run through a Python tutorial in Dynamo for Revit. Um, today we're going to be looking at the boilerplate as we call it. Um, so previously we've looked at making custom nodes and custom packages and also just the fundamentals of Python outside of Dynamo and now we're giving it some context in Dynamo itself. So the boilerplate. So we're going to cover um, what the boilerplate is, what I'm talking about. Um, we're going to explain each piece of the boilerplate and show you how you can build your own starter as well for every time you open a Python script. So I guess most people come to me with a lot of questions about what I'm calling the boilerplate. It seems to be the most common point of confusion in Python with Dynamo for beginners. Um, but the boilerplate is essentially all the beginner text in a script when you write it in Python. So these are things like importing um, and calling on references or DLL, DLL files as we call them. Um, essentially they just give you all the functions you need to execute your Python script. One of the most common things you need it for is to import Revit nodes or Revit API. So I'm going to cover each part and how you can set it up. So there's a few syntaxes we're going to see here um, that I should probably reference. Um, the first one is that if you ever see anything with a hashtag, it's a comment and it doesn't do anything in the script. So that just lets you leave comments. Um, it can be good to sometimes annotate your, um, your boilerplate with what it's doing. So if you're importing certain packages, maybe just put a brief comment about what you're importing. Um, the next syntax is import. So import essentially allows you to bring in what we call a namespace, um, or I think some people call them modules, packages, um, essentially just a, a collection of objects in Python, or, which are usually are methods or functions that we can call on that aren't there by default. Um, from these namespaces, we can use two syntaxes. One of them is import uh, with an asterisk, which means I want to import everything in this entire namespace. So I want every method, every function, anything that it contains. We don't usually do this because sometimes these contain thousands of objects, um, such as methods that we don't actually use in our script. So eventually they will slow down your Python script and your Dynamo script as a result. Um, alternatively, most of the time we'll use from a namespace, import something. So from this namespace, we're picking a very particular function or method that we're calling on instead. I do see this is used way too often in um, custom nodes uh, that people build but maybe don't maintain. Um, so it, it potentially makes the custom nodes very slow to run. So a boilerplate might look a little bit like this. So obviously there's a lot there, so we need to break it down. Um, so I'll do my best to break it down based on my research and sort of what I've seen from other people's training as well um, in a short video. So I like to see starting off a Dynamo Python script a bit like sort of checking out books from a library. Um, so we're going to be talking about the CLR um, next and essentially I like to see this as the library that we're borrowing books from and then each little piece of the boilerplate is a book that we're checking out and it has pages that contain methods and functions so we can we can either call on the entire book or we can just call on the page that we need to reference. So I like to see it in that way and it made a bit more sense to me once I sort of looked at that metaphor instead. So it's important to try not to borrow an entire book or namespace. Um, or reference. Um, you don't want to just import everything because like I said, it can slow down the Python script a lot. Um, and usually we only really need like one or two things to run our particular Python script. For example, down the bottom, instead of importing the entire Revit API um, class, uh, I'm, just, I'm just importing the wall class in this case so that I can use some methods that apply to walls. As well as that, um, don't check out the entire library. So don't um, just copy in the same boilerplate for every single Python script. It can be really tempting because you don't want to just go and you know write up a new boilerplate every time. It's too annoying. Um, you just want to get to the good stuff and start building your Python script. Um, but it's much better if you don't just import the whole entire library every time. Again, I see this in a lot of Python scripts that are built um, by first timers or early people. Even I did this at first just to make it easier. When you're training in Dynamo, um, in Python, maybe you have the entire boilerplate there, but eventually when you start developing custom nodes, you should really limit how much you need in there. And you might not even need a boilerplate. If you're just using Python, um, so doing like an if function uh, to filter out like a stream of data, you don't even need um, CLR or any of the packages we're going to discuss. 
Anyway, CLR. So this is usually the, the first line in a boilerplate. Maybe a comment, maybe this. Essentially, this is the common language runtime. It gets everything started. So it gives access for Dynamo to call on all sorts of references, DLLs, namespaces, methods. Um, without this, you really can't get started. So it's nearly always necessary. Um, it calls on dynamic link libraries or DLL files. They're a little bit like executables, um, but they need to be called on by another program, um, usually through some sort of code. Um, so they're, they're a bit like instructions. It's like opening up a little manual that tells the program how to do something. So essentially this is just the, the way that Dynamo handles um, all of its methods that it stores outside of the Python, um, the Python shell. Um, typically they're stored at the program files folder under the version of Revit you have, add-ins Dynamo for Revit. I think I've got a folder open here that contains it. And essentially you're gonna be pulling on some of these DLLs that are stored in the root folder. Not all of them, um, they're not all here just for Python um, to call on uh, using the boilerplate. Some of them I think are called on just by default, um, but you may call on a few of these. <clears throat> and there's a subfolder called Revit but there are some that we will commonly call on. Um, in particular, the uh, I think the Revit nodes and the Revit services, they're very commonly referenced in boilerplates. So essentially, they're the two folders they come from. You don't need to actually use those folders, that's just where they're located. Um, so the first thing that usually a lot of boilerplates will have is the Revit nodes. So typically you'll reference the DLL for Revit nodes, then you'll import the Revit namespace. Um, and from these, you'll get the Revit element and the Revit geometry conversion uh, nodes. So these essentially are calling on um, Dynamo functions. So I don't believe they're calling on direct API, they're calling on the Dynamo functions themselves. So you'll usually be using very similar syntaxes for the methods in these to uh, the way the Dynamo nodes and functions are called as well. Um, so they're, qu they're quite handy to have available. Um, from here, uh, the Proto Geometry Library is usually required when you're dealing with geometry in Dynamo. Um, it deals with all the preview geometry and all the geometry classes that Dynamo is using. Um, so this is quite common when you're dealing with points, lines, vectors, solids, etc. Um, but if you're not dealing with geometry, it's not necessarily required. From here, um, the Revit API and the Revit API UI um, can be called on via their respective DLLs uh, via a reference as well. And then you can import the Autodesk namespace and you can load um, various classes of the API and the API UI. Um, so these are more common when you're dealing with you know, actual API functions that you need. Um, so these are quite important as well um, when you're not just using inbuilt Dynamo node functions. From here, um, we've got Revit services. So the main reason that you'll usually see this used is for two things. Um, typically you'll import the, or you'll add the reference for Revit services, you'll import the Revit services namespace, and from this you'll import the document manager or the transaction manager or both. And these are really important because essentially these introduce Dynamo classes um, that allow you to interrogate the current document that Dynamo is looking at. Uh, most methods and functions in Dynamo in Python um, require the active document to be involved in some way. Um, as well as that, the transaction manager is essentially a way to commit changes to the Revit model um, safely or at all. So the current document is usually called on with the line up the top here. Um, so document manager instance current DB document. And you might also call on the UI app and the app and the UI doc. I won't really go into those because I find that they're not as commonly used because people don't tend to interact with the UI as often um, or the app. Um, but they give you the current document and typically most, most commonly people will define um, document as doc for a variable so that you can use the word doc later on in your Python script and it will refer to the current document so you're not writing this out every time. Uh, the transaction manager is a little bit different, so you usually will start a transaction, do your actions, and then finish it. So you want to basically use this line at the top first to ensure that you're able to un undertake your transaction, do your actions, and then you have to tell Revit that you're done with the transaction um, using these commands. So this essentially means you change Revit model elements, and it checks out a spot in the queue for the Revit DB, um, essentially to allow you to undertake this transaction. Um, and then usually it happens pretty close to the end of a script because you'll usually do a lot of data processing and then you'll commit all these actions to a, a change in Revit. You may not need the transaction manager. Um, if you're just passing data through the node um, and you're not sending anything back to Revit or you're just reading data out of Revit, you, you won't need to do the transaction manager. 
So another syntax that's really useful, um, I found this one quite late into my learning and I wish I knew it really early, is that obviously we don't really know what all these methods and portions of all these namespaces are called. Um, one way we can sort of interrogate a portion of the namespace is the dir bracket object um, command. So the object is what we're interrogating and dir is the command. So if you're ever trying to figure out what belongs to a particular namespace, if you want to call on like a smaller section of it, I'll just make a Python script. Um, it's going to come up with my default boilerplate. I'll talk about this shortly. Um, but if I just want to say take something from one of these classes, um, let's take the Revit API maybe. So I'm just going to interrogate I'll, I'll, from Revit DB, I'll just I'll just import wall, and I'll just go the out of my script equals uh, dir wall. I just want to see what's in wall, and what I should get out of here is basically all the possible um, methods that I can apply to the class of wall. So I can see them all here. There's quite a lot. Some of them are really obvious, like ID a name, um, pinned, but they're not, they're not all super obvious, like especially some of these, <clears throat> sorry, <coughs> especially some of these commands with um, double underscores and really specific caps and lowercase. Um, you can also go check online on the Revit API docs website um, for common references. So this is probably known by most people, but there's a Revit API docs website and that contains terms as well. So if I search for wall, I can obviously go to the wall class or I can look at wall methods. Um, and I can obviously see all these different, all these different commands as well. Um, so really handy database to get information from. Um, as in addition to that, um, I don't just have the dir command. I can also interrogate the documentation about an element as well by adding a dot, two underscores, doc, and two underscores. So similarly, if I go back in my Python script and I just go out is wall dot underscore lowercase doc double underscore save and I can see that this represents a wall in Autodesk Revit. Um, I can also get more specific I can say I want to know more about wall let's say ID okay that's not going to work in this case some some things don't always call on the things that you need um, I need a dot there actually I think yeah there we go I found usually there's documentation available for these things, um, but there you go, I can see now this is telling me that the ID is a unique identifier for an element in Autodesk. And I can see that the, the syntax here is ID self bracket element is the element ID. Um, so really helpful in this case. Um, so ID bracket this. So you can see some syntaxes in there as well. Um, I find sometimes the the Dynamo nodes have an easier syntax to understand. So if I go back to my back to my Dynamo nodes, which are up here in Revit.elements, Revit nodes. I think I'll just go and just try and call on the vector class. So I think vector. There we go. So we can see all these things about vectors. I think there's a by two points. So what I'll do in this case is just check out the vector by two points. Cause I know that one has a, um, a syntax that's easy to understand. See, I get sort of prompts to pick things as I go. So that's quite helpful. So dot double underscore dot double underscore. And there we go. So you can see by two points and I have two variables, the start as a point, the end as a point and the result is a vector. Um, so I find they're really helpful to start learning what all these commands do when you see them. As well as that, you can actually template your Python file um, that opens by default, which is really useful. So typically that will be stored under C drive, under your user app data roaming folder um, in your respective version of Dynamo Revit. So in my case, I've just got this file here. I've already edited my Python template, but you'll find a little file here called Python template. I typically use Notepad++ um, to edit text these days because it's free and it's really easy. And it also highlights keywords out of Python as well, like import and from. It's much easier to read what's going on. But essentially, I've just copied in a whole bunch of references that come up by default. So I've got all the namespaces. I've got CLR. I've got a little bit of documentation at the top that I usually like to include, such that says I've made the node. It's free for use. And here's my website. Um, beyond that, I sort of just have some references to the current UI and doc and app. 
Then I have uh, just a section about unwrapping and defining inputs. I have a little dummy uh, transaction manager in case I do any transactions. And then I have a little bit of stuff about um, wrapping elements into, into Revit um, and also just preparing an output at the end. So it's, a, it's sort of like a template. So the idea is that in, I guess back in um, Dynamo Python, when you've got a script that you first begin, you're not gonna keep the whole boilerplate. You're gonna limit it to what you need. So you might build your whole script down here and write it out and then figure out which sections of this space you don't require and sort of strip it back so that you're really limiting just how much you need. I mean, some, some nodes, you barely need anything to really get them started. Um, for example, I've got a, I've got an if node. Oh no, sorry, an if node under script, I think. Oh, the math logic, if then else. And this, this node literally has, it has one Python node in it and it doesn't require any, any namespaces to get going. So you don't need that much in there sometimes to really get what you need. Anyway, so there's two places where you can get good templates for these. Um, one of them is the Dynamo Python Primer. So not the Dynamo Primer, but the Dynamo Python Primer by Oliver Green. Um, he's been really generous to sort of put together a, a, a GitHub um, wiki in his own time. And he's actually got a section, I think it's section 3.2 where he gives you the boilerplate that he recommends, um, which is, is pretty good. I, I added a bit more documentation to mine just to explain it a bit more. Um, there's a couple of asterisks in there to be careful of as well. So you may not always want to just keep the asterisks once you set everything up. But the great thing is he's added an annotated boilerplate as well. So he's got a full set of documentation about what each part of his boilerplate does. So if you've got Notepad++ for example, um, you can sort of start reading what all these things do. Obviously that's probably not that readable actually compared to um, compared to just reading it on his actual section here. But I found this really helpful to get my head around it all. Um, the other reference that's quite good as well is Solomore's uh, GitHub has a section with some Python templates. And I quite liked his, um, for people that don't know who he is, he's the product manager of Dynamo. So, um, you know, he knows what he's talking about for sure. <laughs> um, so if you just open up his little Revit Python template, you can see he's got his own by, uh, by Brendan Cassidy, I guess. It's not by, uh, not by him necessarily, um, but he's stored it. Um, so you can see he's got like something that's a bit more similar to how I've structured mine, um, but obviously you can customize yours to suit um, how you feel best. And you can obviously put things in like Twitter handles, versions, who made it. Um, that can be nice sometimes to, to let people know who put it together. Um, but that's essentially, essentially it. So, um, so that's the boilerplate. Um, in future videos, we're actually going to start looking at some samples of how you can apply Python um, to Dynamo. And then we're going to look at the Revit API briefly, um, look at some references to the Revit API and how we can apply some of the classes and the methods um, in, in Dynamo. And then we're going to look at some more advanced samples where we actually interact with the Revit model, we engage in transactions, we call on classes, we apply methods to Revit elements instead. Um, and then from there, there might be some future videos as I find topics that are relevant. So hopefully that sort of helps get you started with the boilerplate um, and sort of break down the, the walls of what, what looks quite challenging to begin with and probably what scares a lot of people away from Python and Dynamo. Um, so I'm going to be putting just probably my boilerplate um, and also just the presentation on GitHub um, if you need. Um, but that's all for today. So hopefully um, I'll be seeing you in the next video. I make two to three videos a week um, usually and I plan to do so for a while and there'll be some more videos coming on Python and Dynamo and other topics. So if you're not already following and subscribing, um, feel free to do so. And hopefully I'll see you in the future videos. Thanks. Take care. Bye.